welcome in, guys, to week three for the Be Made Bandits. A uh, little bit different take here. There was no live broadcast of these races, as you can see right now. That is Mr. Edmund Jones, myself, in a midget car once again with the Be Made Bandits. So, we are attempting a new type of broadcast. It'll be myself and Mr. Andrew Thornton in the booth. Say hi, Andrew. How do you do? Both of us will be calling this race. Uh, this is going to give us a little bit more time to go over any incidents, be able to, you know, watch ourselves succeed and fail, and be able to not only come out as a racer and have fun with these guys because. For a long time before the broadcast, I was out here with them every Tuesday night as long as I could. And it's been an amazing time being in the broadcast booth, but I definitely enjoy being back in the car. Going stir crazy because we can't be locked in a box. Yeah, they they just put me in there. Andrew locked it, didn't give me the key. Like it it, it was bad. They wouldn't even give me food. Okay, they wouldn't even give me the chili dog I wanted, but that's a blessing and a curse. But we're going to be trying this tonight, guys. It's a little bit different perspective. Uh, you know, apologies ahead of time if me and Andrew <laughs> can't talk in third person all the time about ourselves. Uh, it's a definite adjustment, and we want to hear your guys' feedback. When you watch this replay, if you guys enjoy having us do this the next day, Please let us know if you guys would prefer to see the live broadcast and the replays of the live broadcast from Tuesday night, then we can also go back to that as well. Yes, yeah, so we can definitely put him back in the box if you so wish. Yeah, your fate's in my hand. Or my fate is in your hands, guys. So, we do also have one little technical difficulty. Uh, you, we will hear about that with the post-race interviews from the midgets as well um all the post-race interviews were recorded directly after each race um unfortunately i did not save the replay from the silver crown race there will only be one replay of the midgets this week for the b main bandits uh, if we choose to do this next week we will make sure everything is fine for both races and we will get both races up uh, it was just a mistake for us tonight. We do have the post-race interview with the top three from the Silver Crown race. So we will add that at the very end of this. So stick around for that. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hop into it here in just a minute. Uh, looks like we're going through qualifying at the moment. We have about a minute and a half left of qualifying before we jump into the heat races. So let's get into a little bit of info about the track. So Fairbury is a tight little bull ring. Um, it is wide for a track surface. So there is different racing lanes. But with it being just under a quarter mile at .24 miles track length, it's an insane track. Um, being able to go out there and drive with these guys and feeling the reverse banking down on the uh, low end of the track. And then it has a little bit of progress banking going up. So you're able to run the top. You're able to run the bottom. And these midget cars, they, they go everywhere. You guys are going to see this be some great action. Guys ripping the lip, guys ripping the bottom. I uh, didn't get slicked off quite as much as we were wanting, did it, Andrew? No, didn't slick off near as much as we figured it would. But uh, we're only eleven cars. We're about six or seven cars light of our usual car count this season. Uh, the Fairbury just seems to not be the most popular option for us. Now, it's definitely not a popular option for a lot of guys. But, with that said, we are going to be hopping into the first heat race of the night. 
So let's see if let's see if we can't can't eyeball this just a little bit. You got the fifty of Joseph Smith on the front row. Outside front row is going to be the four, John O'Brien. And looks like it'll be Mr. Mike Henry and Craig Sylvie on row number two. With Ryan Paget and Austin Thornton rounding out the field for heat race number one. Unfortunately, guys, the SDK Tower here is showing all 11 cars on track. That was not the case. It was a six and or a uh, seven, six cars. Seven and six split. Or, yeah, it is six this time. So as we get green, Joey does get off to a great start. Getting up, rocking that bottom, rocking the middle, as Mr. Paget is trying to get around him there. Paget on that really low line with Joey Smith up high. As we do have an incident behind, let's go ahead and pause this for a moment and go back and take a look and see exactly what did happen here, Andrew. So you see John O'Brien, or yeah, O'Brien on the bottom. And he just hits that lift. Gets the car upset. But he wasn't the cause of the caution. It looks like it was actually Mr. Craig, Z uh, Craig Silby taking a very interesting ride. Let's go back and ride in his cockpit. Because I remember watching this live, and I wanted to see exactly what was happening with him. As we ride along with Craig here, John with the big power wheeling down the front straightaway, Craig tries to cut the corner real low and grabs a hold of that tractor tire. With these 800-pound cars, man, these tires do not move. Which is amazing to watch. Someone of Craig's just skill level make a really a rather silly mistake. Just boom, hits the left front on that tractor tire and it just, it does not work out for him. It was unfortunate for Craig, but we do know with his skill level, he is able to come back and have a strong running in any main event on any dirt track. In any car so nothing he's too worried about and guys with ma the magic of editing we're through the pace laps and going back green here Joey gets a horrible start allowing Paget to get underneath him Paget really liking that low line that's where the a lot of the speed is right now Joey just not able to keep it down there Seeing a lot of wheel stands out of these guys. The track was really hooked up and guys just could not figure out the gearing, unfortunately. And all you see is another caution. What exactly happened there? Let's go back and take a look. Oh, we're missing a lime green car, so that would have to be Austin. Yeah. Let's go back and take a look at Mr. Austin Thornton here and see exactly what happened. Diving down into one and two. Oh, just slides up and makes contact with Mike Henry. It ends up facing the wrong way on a one-way street. Yeah, you cannot make contact with these open-wheel cars. It will upset them every time. And as they wait for the pace car, it looks like it'll be Ryan Paget on NP1, Joey Smith in two, John O'Brien in third. Mike Henry Jr. after the contact is in fourth. Austin Thornton fifth with Craig Silvey rounding out the field. Unfortunately, a lap down fourth. And we are back. Pace truck is off. Ryan Paget will lead them into three and four. Huge checkup on the restart. And he did get an ELL for that. I do remember that, guys. Trying to check up the field to get the advantage. And he does get it. 
and gets a massive one second lead at the small track over Joey Smith. As Joey and John, one run in mid, one run in a slider line, trying to fight for P2. As the ugliest car on track is trying to jump up there for a podium position. Andrew, you got any comments about why your brother would do something so ugly on a race car? You definitely can't miss it on the, on the track with the steel black race cars, can you? It, I'll, I'll give you that. But my God. And John O'Brien goes around. And coming to the checkered, that will allow the ugly lime green monstrosity out there to come home third. Joey Smith second with Ryan Paget getting, I believe, his first heat race win of the season. Yeah, all all for naught though, because in the B main bandits, we uh, we have a rule with restarts. You have to maintain pace, speed, and him checking up the field to try to get his desired uh, Dorito effect, as he calls it, off of turn number four. It ended up sending him to the tail of the A main. Yeah, it did not work out for him. Which I mean, I, I I'd say unfortunate, but man, he deserved it. So coming into heat race number two. Once again, the SDK software showing all 11 cars on track. That is not the case, guys. But on the front row, you do have Logan Laybourne and Richie Joplin. Row number two is a very awkward situation. I get to call myself uh, Andrew Thornton in the 31. To his outside, you got the Wonder Boy, Jackson McLean. And rounding out the field of five for heat race number two is Edmund Jones in the 51 machine. So, that awkward for you, buddy? A little bit. A little bit, but <laughs> I, 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 I'm getting used to it. As we do it more, it, it's going to get better. So bear with us, boys. So coming down so, into three and four, Wayborn will lead them to green. These heat races go quick. Is Richie, man, I, I, I don't even know what happened there. He just did not get a restart. <laughs> Massive three for one just move by myself getting up into the second position even getting around Jackson McLean for a second and unfortunate like just all for naught tried putting myself in a great spot for the heat race and it just didn't work let's go back and take a look and we'll, we'll ride along with Richie here and try to see what happened on this restart so going into three and four here. Let's watch his wheel inputs here. He just gets loose. The throttle's all over the place and just cannot get it going. And that brings out the yellow, unfortunately, for the rest of the field. Mostly the 51 car making that great move. See, actually, I don't believe Richie was the cause of the yellow. I think I was because I had a great run into turn one and decided not to clean out the rookie. Is that what you think happened? Let's go back and take a look for, from you here. So diving down into one. See, but you kept it going. So, yeah, really, really, I don't know what iRacing's... But it did send me to the tail for that, so I do believe it was on me. Was it? Okay. Well, we will go with that. I don't understand why iRacing... I, I don't think we'll ever understand iRacing and why they throw their cautions. No, I truly think that's another reason this track's an unpopular option, is the, the way it throws cautions here is strange, because if you're... You're close enough to stopping on occasion. It will throw a yellow here, even though you know, we all maintain a forward potion. And Pace Truck does go off this time round. Single file for restart in heat race number two. Wayborn will lead them into one, running a mid line. Don't know if he just missed the corner there or not. Jackson was looking low. As we do have a battle in the back between Andrew and Edmund. Trying to just not be the worst in heat race number two. As we're trying to get around Richie Joplin. 
Looks like the low line will prevail here. Richie just not able to get the car down low, whether it be just not willing to get in between us or just unable to get the car down there at all. As Jackson McLean working that low line has made it under Logan Laybourne. As now SDK decides, oh, four to go. Three laps to go now. As Jackson McLean does lead, Laybourne in second. Andrew Thornton up in third with Edmund Jones fourth and Richie Joplin rounding out the field. White flag next time by. Everybody has single filed out. Everybody's playing nice now. Everybody with the exception of Richie Joplin really working that low line. It looks like heat race number two will come to a close in that order. And just like that, guys, we are into tonight's 30-lap feature for the B-Main Bandits here at Fairbury. Andrew Thornton, go ahead and get us started with that grid walk, buddy. All right. Starting inside of row number one, the man we just let out of the box out of Yakima, Washington, driving number 51, it's Edmund Jones. To his outside, out of New Jersey, a longtime league member and league admin, Mike Henry Jr. in the 92. Although I do believe he took his EOL, just want to stay out of the way. Yeah, he did take an EOL, which will put uh, Mr. Austin Thornton up on the front row. But it will be Andrew Thornton, and it looks like Joey Smith on row number two. And right behind him will be Logan Laybourne with Richie Joplin. And then after that, looks like row number five will be Jackson McLean. And I believe Craig Silby did take an EOL as well. So a bunch of EOLs here. Messes up the grid, but we are have fired for the 30 lap heat race. Going into and early on, race. early on, we got racing three and four wide here at Fairbury. A couple guys up top, a couple around the bottom, and a few trying to make the middle work. Yeah, definitely a melee on these restarts for the start. Double file, so these guys are able to utilize every last bit of space they can. And so far, after four laps, everything looks clean. Edmund Jones is leading with Jackson McLean getting underneath. Jackson able to really make that low line work and gets around Edmund. Sylvie looking for the same, followed by Andrew Thornton. Austin Thornton back in fifth, just trying to hold on. And even from this camera angle, you cannot miss that car out on track. It's like a little no, you definitely cannot. You cannot. And we go into my great fail tonight. As we are under caution for the first time. So let's go back. Take a look here. From the cockpit view of my 51 ride here. So you see Sylvie does get underneath the 51 there. And the 51 just sends it in. Trying to get underneath. And ends up looking at the dirt. A little bit of that dirt track inexperience and uh, lack of situational awareness there for you, buddy. Just a little bit, you know, to my defense. Um, just getting a little bit more aggressive than what I probably should have been. And it was uh, an unfortunate event. Just trying to race with these guys. But I had more confidence than brains out there last night, and I have no problem admitting that. What can we say? We just let you out of the box. You were hungry. I was hungry to do anything last night, especially after uh, Monday night. I, I, I've been feeling confident on eye racing lately, and it was about time I got home. We'll just keep it at that. Well, that makes you the first casualty of the evening. First car upside down and needs to tow back to pit road. And 
single file. Jackson McLean will lead them to the green flag. Craig Sylvie right behind with Andrew Thornton and the other half of the Retard Brothers, Austin Thornton right behind them. With it being a single file restart, these guys are not having as much of three and four wide racing. Everybody tr mostly trying that low line. Get a couple guys in the back. Ryan Paget, Richie Joplin, both, and more so Richie, trying to go up high. And we're back under yellow. I don't remember exactly what caused it. Well, we just had a car upside down there in turn one and two. Did we? We sure did. Let's go back and see if we can find it. You got a name for me, Andrew? Uh, let's see. Oh, I, I I can already see it from this camera angle. It is Mr. Joey Smith. Casualty of the tires goes to Mr. Joey Smith. Yep, infield tractor tire got him another one. That would be Brocephus himself or Fat Charlie Sheen, however you want to acknowledge him. Do, he, uh, do, do we really need to acknowledge him, though? Well, doing his best uh, breakdance moves with the short wheelbase car off the infield tires, proving twice tonight, even if you hit the same tire with more than one car, it still doesn't move. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they have them anchored down with some concrete anchors or something, man. They, they they just will not move. I bet you you go in there with a late model and it still flips the late model. <laughs> Maybe we can get a street stock out here. I think the only thing safe uh, from those tires is maybe a Pro 4 truck. So, everybody getting lined up here. Single file looks like we will be back green once again with Jackson Mas Jackson McLean. I almost called him Jackson Smith for some reason. But Jackson McLean bringing us to the start. And he fires here at Fairbury. Still staying on that low line. Uh, like we alluded to earlier, you know, with me and Andrew, th this track just did not slick off quite as much as we were hoping. So you see Craig Silby trying the high side there, but just gains no momentum on Jackson. So this is... And we had another, had another casualty there behind him. Looked like Austin went for a ride right rear end of the front straightaway wall. Let's go back and take a look. Da -da -da. Yeah, there we go. Looks like he, ah, he didn't have help, but he had contact after. Andrew, or Austin, just trying to push way too hard coming out of four. Taps the wall. Tried to break that train and run the high side for himself, and uh, he kind of gives you an example of why a lot of us weren't running up top, because that after you got about that midway point off of turn four, there was nothing to catch you. It No, you're completely right, and... I, I remember trying to go up there a couple times during uh, during practice mostly, so the track was even tackier then, and you had to really like feather the throttle coming off. If you weren't, able there was just just nothing to lean on. These cars weren't moving enough material to the top to really build a cushion. Yeah, it, which to me is weird because most of the time when I'm at Fairbury. It's not in a midget. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not a dirt racer the majority of the time anyways. But the majority of my Fairbury experience has been with either wing sprints or, you know, late models. And being able to run the top is key in those classes. So, it's kind of weird to see it not move to the top, but also refreshing at the same time to see a different line. And just like that, pace laps blink of an eye and you would miss them we are back under green Jackson shooting back to the bottom Andrew looking underneath Craig there 
but the question is, can he do anything to get by him? Can't yet. Looks like you had Brian Paget in the back getting real loose. And contact between Mike Henry and Austin Thornton once again will bring us under caution. Uh, I don't think we'll insult Mike. I believe that was Austin and Joey. Oh, no, I believe I saw the black and gold. I think Joey was... Oh, no, it's different black and gold. It was Mr. Richard Joplin that they got into. Looks like Austin just got in there a little hot and made some contact with Richie. You know, Joey just casualty of the fray. If you're, you're keeping score here, we're going to get 30 laps in, but it seems like we're going to do it two by two by two by two by two. It, it's very possible, which, unfortunate for dirt racing, it, it's very momentum-based. You, you have to gain your momentum back, at least for me. If I can't get in a rhythm in these dirt cars, it is rough. And to get in that rhythm, I, I got to have some green flag laps. And having these pace laps just wind down every time, especially with pace laps not counting, it, it makes for a very, very long night. Well, and as you've seen, you know, with our fall season and so far into our spring season, this this is not normal for us to have this many yellows, especially this early on in a race. Yeah, and it, it's, it's weird to see guys in the midgets fight this hard, but these tight little boards, man, it, it's, you run out of room so quick, and back under green, Jackson will lead them, once again, taken to the low line, the majority of everyone is down there, it looks like you have Richie Joplin and Logan Laybourne up in the mid groove, mid to top, but just not making any room, Jackson kind of pinching off Sylvie there, looks like there was a little bit of contact between your leaders, and Sylvie be able to maintain that bottom line we'll get around Jackson Jackson trying the top but we saw it with Sylvie earlier it just it does not work as Sylvie will maintain the position and we're back under yellow here yeah, I, know, I, I know exactly what this is for oh do do we is, is it your time to eat some crow here Oh, yeah, it's my turn to make fun of myself here. You know, I, I, I really can't say much because I was in it, too. So, see Andrew coming in here. This gets low. Tractor tire casualty. That makes three for the night. Three and a half because we, we collected you in the process. We're, we're, we're going to need a little ticker here. Doug Norton's tractor tire casualties. Yes, yeah, the Doug Norton uke tire kill count. <laughs> well, well, we'll see what we can do to make that happen for next week. But I, I, I remember this one as well. Um, so at at this moment, I'm I'm actually a lap down, and me in my mindset, just trying to get back into it, got very aggressive. And I, I saw guys checking up, touch the brakes, and when you're mid-slide and you have to brake, it doesn't work out. So we'll, we'll chalk up both announcers to that casualty count there. And just like that, the pace truck lights are back off. Craig Silby did capture the lead. So it will be his first time tonight restarting the field in P1 with Jackson McLean and Logan Laybourne right behind him. Logan trying to shoot to the bottom, but just doesn't get a good enough restart to get under Jackson McLean. As the top three have basically single filed out, you do have John O'Brien here. And then it looks like Mike Henry and Ryan Padgett trying to make huge moves. I know from the chat he was wanting to get up there. Henry jumps to the top. O'Brien doesn't quite spin it. He gets the car upset, but we stay under green. Uh, 
guys, just like that, looks like we have more chaos in the back. We caught a little piece of it live here. Let's go back and see exactly what happened. Looks like Richie Joplin did start it. Just carbon carbon copy of what Austin did earlier in the race. Just missed the missed the corner exit, right rear tire into the fence, sends the car for a ride. And unfortunately, he collects Austin and is that John there in the four. Yep, that, that's John. So a couple casualties there, but it looks like the car is unharmed. I, it's amazing. You see it with Tulsa all the time. These guys will flip and just drive off. Or not drive off, but be pushed off and restart the car and go back out and race. You know. Yeah, that, that, that's one thing I'm grateful for. The eye racing is not as realistic in as how fragile these machines can be. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, officials would really be rough with all the squeakers out there flipping. Hey, actually, eye racing make it realistic. We want them off the track. So when they go flip it, we need to, you know, hey, no, y'all get the fuck off my track. Hey. You know how many races we wouldn't finish because of Paget? <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair, fair. <laughs> we go coming back to green. Craig Sylvie leads us down. Now, another interesting point this season. So far through our six races, we haven't seen Craig Sylvie up front very much. Last year's champion been struggling a little bit getting going, but he seems to have found the combination here at Fairbury. Uh, and he always seems to be very fast here as... Yeah, the tractor tire gets him another one. Kind of, maybe. No, we no, stayed green. No, we stayed green for that. What? A no, no, we didn't. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I apologize for the little bit of sickness that you're going to get from this. Holy cow, Paget tear-offs. Have you heard of them? Uh, he does better drive them blind. So... We'll go back and take a look here. Comes down, tractor tire, 360, six the landing, and gets it going. It's just not not quick enough. You see the yellow lights on around the speedway. So the uh, the AI race controls, you know, not impressed. Yellow comes out, pads to the tail. Which is very unfortunate because. Like, like like I said earlier, we need that that consistency, the ability to just get in that groove on dirt, and to this point, I don't feel anybody's been able to. I I, I think our longest green flag run was maybe about three laps. And I think the I think the opening five laps has been the longest stint so far. And like I mentioned earlier, this is not typical for us here in the B-Main Bandits Racing League to have this many yellows. It, it really is not. You guys have really made a difficult job for me throughout the season because there's so much green flag action, it's hard to really capture it all. And total opposite end of the spectrum. And pace lap's done once again. Craig Silby will lead down into one, taking a little bit different approach that time than he has in the past as we are back under yellow again. I know, oh, are we not? No, we are no, not. we are not. I did see a little bit of a incident in the back, but the AI not being consistent keeps it green. But looks like we will be under yellow for that incident. I believe that was uh, league rookie Logan Layborn. Was that Logan? Yeah, one of the only white cars out there tonight. Let's go back and take a look. A little bit of blink in there. Just contact with Andrew, man. What? I don't know what he was thinking there. Just trying to maybe get a run. Does a quick 360 and gets it back going. But just enough to keep us... Or get us back under yellow. 
So what that means is Kirk Sylvie will be back. MP1 to restart once again. Jackson McLean behind him. Mike Henry Jr. And then Andrew Thornton. Awesome Thornton. That is your top five. Nine cars on the lead lap currently. And behind Austin, you have Richie Joplin, John O'Brien, Ryan Paget, and Logan Wayborn. With so interesting point here is in P3, Mike Henry, he took the EOL to start the night, you know, not wanting to get in the way. He's been struggling with uh, steering wheel inputs here the last few weeks. And just staying out of trouble, he's been running middle to high all night. He's kind of stayed off the bottom for the most part. Now he's running the third spot. And that, that's just typically Mike's style. Just from running with him over the years, you know, he's that guy that you'll be like, where did he come from at the end of the race? Because he's so quiet, but so methodical in how he races and how consistent he is. And there you go. You see him back up top. Unfortunately, just not enough grip up there to really gain speed. Or should I say, not enough lack of grip on the bottom. As here we are once again, Andrew Thornton looking under Jackson McLean. And the tail of the two lines here is the big story. Jackson, who is typically a lot faster than Andrew, isn't able to really fight him off here with Jackson running the top, Andrew running that bottom, and they're able to stay side by side and fight for that P2 position. Still give it to Jackson McLean. So he found something, even tapping the wall up there. As synchronized swimming has come to iRacing, guys. Go back and take a look. That was actually a really cool moment. Maybe not for the guys involved, but hey, it was fun to watch. So Logan Laborn, these guys go in there three wide. He taps Austin, which originally brought out the caution, and just calamity behind, but really. Logan and John O'Brien doing their best synchronized floor routine. Yeah, right there, and around they go and both of them cars unharmed get it back going really a fun thing to watch I'm, I'm noticing a trend here though austin has the car painted up like a 1990s you know laser tag course and it seems like everybody's using him for a target at this point i mean haven't you found out that bright colors make you a target you, you could have gave him that information. Because I, I've run in enough leagues with you, and I've seen you wrecked enough. Like, the main thing is senior. Okay, he can't see cars on the track. And now you give him a bright car. That's all he's going to see. <laughs> so he sees bright, and he's attracted to it like a fly going to a fucking light. Y'all with your bright cars, it, it don't work. It really, it doesn't. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. And pace laps are done once again. Sylvie still in the lead. Jackson McQueen in second. Andrew Thornton in third with Mike Henry Jr. in fourth. And we will fire again for probably the tenth time tonight. Jackson immediately going to that high side as... Just over aggressiveness in the last few moments of this race here. Guys trying to get any position they can. It, it was so hard to pass. They, Frustrations and a bunch of impatience here. Yeah, you see Ryan Padgett here. So Logan taps Andrew and Padgett just has nowhere to go. Guys trying to make more room than it really Oh man, I I, I, we, I I forgot about this. Yeah, we had calamity all over the place. So you know that all started with uh, Logan getting into me, and then he ends up another victim of the tractor tire. I think that makes six and a half or seven a night. And then after the yellow, we have this incident here with Jackson. Hmm. I I really 
I, I, I'd forgotten about this. And I, I, I didn't watch it. I knew something happened. But Wonder Boy, what the hell were you doing, bud? So with that, he collects Mike Henry, and iRacing was going to send just Mike to the back, but <clears throat> upon Jackson admitting his fault in that, he accepted his EOL and went to the tail with only three to go. Because really, it, it wasn't Mike's fault at all. No, not not at all, and considering it happened after the yellow came out. Yeah, it, not a great look on Jackson. That That's definitely very uncharacteristic of him. But I will say good on him for taking the OL, going to the back, but it did ruin his chances at a podium, maybe. I mean, hell, with an, the way the cautions have been going, he might still be able to work his way up there, but highly, highly doubtful. And just like that, it will be Craig Silby, Andrew Thornton, and Richie Joplin, your top three, as we get fired here once again at Fairbury. John O'Brien looking to the inside of Joplin as Thornton and Silby just start walking away. We do have a crazy, crazy battle back here. Austin Thornton looking for that last podium spot. As we are, have five guys there that could have possibly got it. Yeah, Austin goes two for one in the final corner. Ends up on the podium here tonight. Craig Silvey takes the win. Myself in second place. Austin sneaks into third place on a last lap pass. As we see John O'Brien imitating what we did at Oxford. But man, there's no bumps here for you to fly. What What a crazy race. That, 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 that's all I got to say. Like, just absolute calamity. Um, Def definitely not typical of our league whatsoever. You know, and I, I'd love to say that I was the cause of a lot of it. You know, me coming out of the broadcast booth and coming in there definitely didn't help things. You know, I, I, I take my faults. And you'll, you'll hear a little bit of back and forth between me and Craig during the the post-race interview but what what can we really chalk it up to tonight like, like are we just chalking it up to fairbury being fairbury or fairbury full moon somebody's an angry lover putting a voodoo curse on the league for the night i have no clue but it wasn't typical i'm you know i can honestly say i wasn't extremely proud of the product we put on here tonight but, you know, I'm just hoping we get back to our uh, usual standard of racing for next week's broadcast. I really hope so as well. You know, speaking of which, next week for week four, we are going, oh, week four, Asphalt Sprints at Lanier. Which, That's a right foot patience test. They vary. And possibly one of the worst things I've ever seen in this league. Non-wing 360 is a weed sport. Now, I made my return to dirt this week with the B-Main Bandits. I have committed that as long as we keep this project going where me and Andrew will go back through the replays, that I'll be there for every dirt race. I'll be there for every race B-Main puts on. I am not looking forward to to not only I, I I I've never bought Weed Sport. I still to this day have refused to buy Weed Sport. I have avoided every last race there, and I'm gonna have to pony up and try to learn the what is considered as one of the worst dirt tracks on the service, and one of the hardest cars on the service. It's going to be interesting next week, <laughs> to say the least. I think I'm going to have to implement a new rule in the league. If you bring out more than two yellows, you're done, because I might have to use it for you next week. It, 
if, if I bring out more than two yellows, I will park myself because you, by then, it, it. I may not even make it to the main. <laughs> I may not. We'll, we'll we'll see. But guys, again, this is a little project, a little trial period. If you guys like hearing me and Andrew banter back and forth, um, let us know. You know, message myself, message Andrew, message in the Discord. Better yet, you know, if you like it, like the video. It helps me out. It helps the league out. Brings more eyes onto this league and the great racing that we do have normally. Um, you know, you can go back and take a look at all the other broadcast from the B-Main Bandits and see exactly what these guys are about. But please give us your feedback. And, you know, before we get into our post-race interviews for, you know, midget, the Midgets and uh, the Silver Crowns at Rockingham. Andrew, you got anything you want to you wanna say? Oh, uh, I don't really have a whole lot else to add that, you know, wasn't said in the... Uh the interviews uh you know just like you said i hope some people like this project where me and you both trying to do this i know we're a little shaky it takes a little while to kind of gel and learn how that all works you're trying to have two people announcing something like this uh it's actually much easier to do in person take it from experience uh but you know as always bro thanks for uh thanks for broadcasting this stuff you know kind of kind of hate to see that we lost our asphalt race you know just something that slipped both of our minds trying something different but uh and it it's been a good time and i hope uh hope next week works out a little bit better for everybody well and it's like andrew said it's going to take some time for us to gel you know me and andrew are both used to announcing solo but we do have a, an amazing time doing this me me and andrew have fun bouncing off each other and doing just broadcasting in general um, you know, Doug Burns is the guy that really brought me into this. Doug's a great friend of me and Andrew and can't thank him enough. And the knowledge that Andrew and Doug have given me has brought us to where we are now with Warlord Gaming. And hopefully this is a project that we can continue in the future and hopefully put out a amazing product going forward for the B-Main Bandits. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, if you like it, let us know. Give us your feedback. Let's get into those post-race interviews. All right, guys. And after a wild, wild Rockingham race in the Silver Crowns, we are finally through 40 laps and a green-white checkered finish. What else can we say here besides just intense, crazy racing all the way around? Only eight guys in the field, but man, everyone was going for it tonight. We do have Mr. Andrew Thornton up here in the booth with me. He will be handling the first of our three interviews here. And it will be with his brother, Mr. Austin Thornton. We got you up here in the booth. It's Ed and Andrew. You hear us? Yeah. So, Austin, how does it... uh? How's it feel? Another podium for the Silver Crown cars. It's not quite the first place finish you had the first time around, but uh, kind of walk us through your crazy 40 laps here at Rockingham. Well, plain and simple, that was a, that was a cluster. I, and if we're going to be honest, I shouldn't have been in third, but, you know, the, that's how it went, and uh, I can't be... Can't be uh, so what you're basically just saying, it's better to be lucky than good sometimes. Yeah, there was just there. Yeah, it's just one of those races, you know. You end up where you end up, I guess. Yeah, hey, it happens to the best of us, and uh, it's a good points night for you. So, congratulations, and we'll see you in the midgets coming up shortly. Okay. All right, guys, and coming up next, we do have Mister Jackson McLean on with a P2 finish tonight. That will be Mr. Andrew Thornton's interview as well. Jackson, it's Ed and Andrew up here in the booth. You got us? I do indeed. 
All right, buddy. So just like uh, we had with Austin, you know, second place run tonight, uh, led a handful of laps. You know, take us through your wild 40 laps here at the Rock. Uh, a lot of it was dodging uh, Austin and Paget and whoever else. Um, I felt pretty fast. I had the fastest. I qualified on pole, and I felt back at the start. I felt pretty quick all night, but uh, I think some not so good placed cautions kind of screwed me up a little bit. So I'll take second though. Well, I can say I'm a little bit biased. Some of the cautions played out in my favor, and uh, definitely uh, had a good definitely had a good run going to the finish. But uh, congratulations to you! Like just like Austin's great points night for you. And we'll see you in the midgets here momentarily. Yes, sir. And with that, we come to our winner tonight. He's already in the booth. He's already done the first two interviews. It's Mr. Andrew Thornton. How did it feel coming out here and winning a wild finish with a green-white checkered at Rockingham? You know, just like Jackson, my brother, said it, it was... uh calamity i guess would be the proper word for it and just like my brother exactly like my brother i'll take being lucky over good any day uh first win of the season i think that's the fourth fourth podium out of five races so i'll definitely take that as well and uh not having to look at my brother's back bumper on the way to the start finish is even better yeah definitely a great way to come back from your first silver crown race at charlotte this will jump you up a little bit in the points here. We will see the point standings here momentarily. How you feeling, you know, now that we're getting deeper into the season, you think you're going to be able to get up there and possibly compete for your first championship here? Consistency is key. So, so far done. Okay. For the most part, uh, mentioned I had a couple of podiums, but any race can go bad in an instant. You know, sometimes luck's not on your side, but uh, trying to remain positive. I hope, hope we can keep the good finishes coming. Well, consistency is always key. That will do it for us here at Rockingham. We will be back momentarily with the midgets at Fairbury. That is going to be a wild, wild race. One of the smaller tracks on the schedule with the midgets. We'll be back soon for it. We'll see you then. What a crazy, crazy series of events here at Fairbury. I, I, I know I was unstable at times. Uh, first time back in a midget. But it was a great race. Great race for the top three. Unfortunate to see Jackson getting into another incident, taking him off of another podium. But the top three worked their way there, and they had an amazing, amazing finish. Can't wait to be able to speak with these guys. And first up, we do have Mr. Austin Thornton, his second podium of the night. You got us up here in the booth? Austin. Yeah, I sure do. Okay, there we go. Austin, you snuck by for a podium finish tonight. Hey, what? Break down the last couple laps and what exactly happened there. Oh, everybody just started getting greedy, you know? I mean, it's that's dirt track racing for you. Once it starts counting down towards the end, they start getting greedy. And I got shoved around. People made mistakes. And I just slipped through just like the asphalt race. Well, second podium of the night. It's going to be a great points night for you. Great to see you back up here. Uh, we'll see you next week, and great drive tonight, man. Thank you. Andrew, how do you feel about having, you know, your brother on the podium twice? It's got to be a proud moment for you as a league owner and, you know, his older brother. Oh, it definitely is. And uh, as he said in the asphalt interviews, you know, take being lucky over good any day. And uh, from what it sounds like there at the end, a little bit of luck. I can't wait to go back and watch how that all transpired and transpired behind us because uh, it looks like third through seventh all crossed the line basically together. 
It, and uh, definitely a wild finish with you, sir, taking your second podium of the night. The Thornton brothers definitely on top. I mean, how's it feel being able to get up there and, you know, yeah, a little bit of admin privilege kicking Jackson to the back, but do you think you might have had anything for Sylvie? Was there any way you could have possibly won this race? I mean, would I call it admin privilege since I was moving another admin to the back because he wrecked another admin under yellow? But as far as having anything for Sylvie, uh, no, absolutely not, man. We call him King Craig for a reason. He was, he was our triple crown points champion in the fall for a reason that that man can flat, get his way around in these midgets. And anytime it benefits you, sir, it will always be admin privilege, but great drive tonight. And here in just a moment, we will be able to talk with our winner. Let's see if he gets in the discord here momentarily. All right, and he did just hop in here. So we're going to hand this over to Andrew Thornton to speak with our winner tonight, Mr. Craig Silby. Craig, Andrew, Eddie, up here in the booth. You got us, bud? I am. I am. Well, for, first off, congratulations, man. Great great run to the front and maintaining the run up here at the front. Uh, kind of walk us through 30 laps here at Fairbury other than, you know, two by two by two by two. A bunch of yellows tonight, and neither of us wanted to see that. No, you're right. It was very disjointed, which was a shame that we couldn't really get any sort of a rhythm, which was probably just as well for me because there was that 31 car that just kept coming up inside and like, yeah, you were fast as. Oh, man, I I get lucky every once in a while and I could make a good corner, but I couldn't do it consistently, man. Your your car just, the back end drops off the corners and it it's gone and I have nothing for you. Yeah, I've been I've been really working on trying to figure out a setup for this place because it's just the strangest place. Like it's off camber and the bumps and yeah, constantly doing wheel stands. It's uh, it's real hard to try and get the get the thing to keep the front end down. Right, and you know here at Fairbury, uh, it's renowned for having a wide racing surface, but that kind of wasn't the case for us tonight. It seemed like most of us were pretty well stuck to the bottom. Nobody moved up top, or we seemed to have burned it off in practice and uh, the heat races. So we we take a track that's 80 feet wide, and we're running on 25 feet of it, and it, it got pretty sketchy there for a good part of the race. Oh, that's right. It's it's It often is like that around here in the midgets but um there was a race we did oh, i did last last week and uh um there was there was a lot of cars and uh, it yeah the, the whole track was kind of burned off and we were we were like blasting around the top and it was it was hard <laughs> it was really hard well that's kind of what we had expected coming into tonight uh but craig great run tonight great to see you back to your winning form as i was telling eddie earlier this is why we call you king craig you have got these dirt cars figured out my friend oh thank you thank you very much it's uh yeah it's my focus it's all i really drive uh like yeah I, i'm just not even showing up in the in the pavement stuff uh, it's just uh it's just not my thing this is this is where my passion is and uh yeah i just trying to figure it out and and get better and better but everyone's getting better around me which is making the racing so much fun i uh, i really enjoy getting wheel to wheel with you guys well craig great run tonight man Great to see you out here in the dirt, and we'll see you next week, buddy. Oh, uh, thanks, Eddie. Just on just on that uh, that little altercation that we had, I, I just had a look at uh, at the replay from from your point of view, and um, and uh, yeah, yeah, from, you you had a really good run, and uh, I think you probably didn't realize how tight I cut into that turn because it's uh, it's uh, yeah, you've got to you've got to hug it around here, and I was trying to leave room on the inside along the straight but um but i still had to tuck it in to get around the corner and uh yeah i think you must have not realized and and we connected yeah well we're gonna chalk that one up to inexperience this is my first time back in a midget car and man i have no idea how long and i i feel bad for getting india i'm glad it didn't affect your car obviously you came back and you know to win the race 
And my apologies with it. And the more time I get in these dirt cars, the better it's going to be. So I'll, I'll be out here next week with you in the non-wings. And hopefully I can put up a better show for you. Oh, no worries. No trouble at all, mate. I, uh, yeah, yeah. Like you say, it was, uh, I, I came out of it all right. So it was no trouble, but, um, and yeah, it, it was, it was good. It was just good hard racing and, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. All right, Craig, you have a wonderful night. Great drive tonight, buddy. Thanks guys. Well, Andrew, that will do it for this week of B main bandits. Unfortunately guys, and I'm going to apologize now. There is no asphalt broadcast this week. No replay. Um, we discussed it as a technical difficulty, but it's really just a slight, slight of, slip of my mind. Um, we did not save the replay. Um, ultimately, I believe this is going to be a good experiment, and it's going to be fun having you know my best friend and a great announcer sitting here with me and calling these races. So we're going to see how this goes. This is a test this week to all the B-Main community. Um, if me, Andrew, and the rest of the community don't feel this is a good experiment, then we will be back to the live broadcast next week. But until then, guys, uh, before before I sign off, Andrew, you got anything you want to say? I just want to thank everybody that uh, did come out tonight. We a little bit lighter on car count than we have been so far this season. Uh, had 11 midgets, only had eight cars in the asphalt race, which is about half of what we had last week. And I'm just hoping that uh, has something to do with Valentine's Day being uh, tomorrow. So some people are out with their significant others instead of uh, racing here with us. Hope to see the car counts back up next week where we take uh, asphalt sprint cars will be up first at the Lanier Speedway, which is going to be a big right foot patience test. And then we have the first of our kicker races for the season at the non-wing 360 sprint cars at uh, Weed, Weed Sports Speedway. Well, it is definitely going to be a great time here on Warlord Gaming where we are going to capture every last moment of the B-Main Bandits. Hopefully you guys enjoy this experiment, having Andrew in the booth. Of course, both of us are on the track, so a little weird calling yourself, but it's going to be a fun time. If you guys like it, please subscribe, like, comment. It just helps out the channel, helps out the B-Main Bandits. If you want to come run with them, they run on Tuesday nights. Join the Discord to get all the information or contact Andrew Thornton on Discord or Facebook. And with that, guys, we will be back next week for Asphalt Sprints and Non-Wing 360s. Until then... Keep on sending it in.